Well, right. dude, thank you again uh, for doing this. Um, we're going to talk about your journey in music. Uh, cool. Mark, tell me, where, where did you grow up? I was born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay. My, talk about that a little pops, bit. Well, my pops was a middle linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles. Was he really? Uh, wow. Mm -hmm. How cool. Uh, his, name, his name is uh, Harold Wells, hence my middle name. Okay. And that's... That's one reason why I like to rock my full name, you know, because not only is, you know, he my father, but, you know, he's a. A legend probably. And, in, in yeah. Philly. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, awesome. I'm actually, yeah, he's, he's actually uh, having some medical stuff going on. He's in the hospital right now. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. So it's a, uh, yeah. So I'm, uh, it's interesting, but he, he's, he's going to be okay. You know, it's That's just. Good. Stuff when people get older, it happens. You know, it's mm -hmm. just it comes with the, you know. Yeah, for sure. Well, how, how did you get into music? If how, having a dad in the NFL, like I would think you'd be a football player. <laughs> I'm very curious. <laughs> I am. My father's father. My father played trumpet, and he was actually chosen in St. Louis to play with W. C. Handy's All Star High School Band. And I don't know if you know who W.C. Handy is, but William Christian Handy is what they call the godfather of the St. Louis Blues. Oh, wow. It had a certain feel to it. So he was a legend. And he went around and picked out, you know, he went to this school and got this guy and then went to that school and got that girl and then this school and, and kind of picked out. So my father was actually chosen. And then he picked the students out, taught them a few pieces to play in front of some luminaries and, you know, one of those kind of things. Wow. And his father also played i actually sat in a room with my grandfather my dad and myself i was playing my uh, cousin bridget's bass and we all sat there and you know i don't even think I, I was mic'd up or the amp was turned on but just being there and then on my mother's side you know there's pictures of my relatives sitting around like at the turn of the century cooking which i love to do and there's guitars in wow so so, so it's, it's literally in your DNA, huh? It sounds like. It's, it's it's really interesting because when you have a calling, which I believe some of us have several at different points in our lives, mm -hmm. but it's like, almost like how they say with the mafia, it's like, I was trying to get it out, but it kept <laughs> pulling me back in. You know, I, I, I did the corporate thing and, you know, it was after the big money thing and trying to, you know, live the American dream, which is turning into the American nightmare. <laughs> ironically and it always came back to music it always came back to I still had the same fire in my heart like this morning I was like literally you know before we got on I was writing some new stuff I'm writing for them it comes out just because I like to keep fresh mm -hmm. you know and I've already written about four or five things in the new year already wow and recorded them yeah that's but awesome. uh you know yeah I, I grew up a big prince fan okay. he's a fellow gym and he was just <laughs> he was just a different kind of a human being he was just an amazing amazing person mm -hmm. and i love the fact that he was able to kind of seamlessly go between so many different genres yet still maintain his sound you knew it was him on a ballad or mm -hmm. rocker the mm -hmm. funky or if he was rapping it was him mm -hmm. And having using that essentially as a blueprint, and then Rush was another big thing for me. Oh, oh. My God, like in high school, hearing getting into Rush, I was kind of a nerd. Went to military school, then ended up going to high school in uh, North Carolina and burning with the heads, you know, after <laughs> school and listening to Rush. And I really, I heard the song Free Will and something snapped and i literally have been obsessed with it ever since because wow. i've been performing all literally performing all my life i've done little like uh, growing up in philly they we had this uh at the school i went to they had like three or four kind of like musical productions like bye bye birdie mm -hmm. oklahoma kind of old school things yeah, like the, that the classic and you had sure. exactly and you had to do at least one per year 
it was part of the oh. curriculum. You had to, which I think was really good to get kids out of their skin. Mm-hmm. But I did all of them oh, wow. because I just love to do it. We mm-hmm. had to wake up at the crack of ass to <laughs> rehearse one hour before and then go to school and then sometimes rehearse after that. Wow. You know, but mm-hmm. it never mm-hmm. seemed like, you know, like life, music never seems like work. Life is work. Mm-hmm. If I could be in a, a perfect little bubble and just create and hum my little weird little songs in my head and do my thing, I'd be so freaking perfect. <laughs> but there's a stuff outside of the bubble. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> that calls a said bubble to burst. So, but, right on. Uh, well, well yeah. uh, you said your dad was a trumpet player. Did you pick up trumpet mm-hmm. first? Or you were talking about playing bass with your grandpa and your very dad. Good, very, good, very good question, sir. <laughs> uh, yes. I did pick up trumpet and I was terrible because you don't give a seven-year-old a damn trumpet. <laughs> and if you have, you know, f- you know, get along with his siblings. I think my sister busted me upside the head a couple times where it's just like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. It's like, how about like, a, I don't know, something quite like an egg or something they should have given me. <laughs> but after like a while, they, you know, <laughs> yeah, something simple, right? And not so blaring. I guess it was the thing of like the pressure on the mouthpiece that I couldn't understand at that time Mm -hmm. how to articulate it, you know, and who knows at some point I might even pick it up again, but I feel like all those, I feel like all those instruments are hard to play. And it's like, those are the choices they give you when you're like in fifth grade, they're like, okay, here's all the wind instruments that are ridiculously hard to make it even make a sound like the flute or the clarinet or the trumpet. (laughs) It's not like exactly something like you could just strum or yeah. It's like, here, kid, I'm teaching you a lesson. Life's going to be hard as shit and really peculiar. <laughs> Here's You're a five and can barely read. Yet yeah, I'm going to you, but I have to read notes now, and I'm going to chastise you for not learning it and tell you to practice more. <laughs> you know, and you're going to grow up loving music, you know? But I always, I, like I said, I always loved it. I always mm-hmm. loved it. And just the, <laughs> literally, when I started, uh, when I, I had this, my first band was called Expugno, and it was a friend of mine, uh, Neil Arte, who's this really amazing uh, fashion designer now, wow. and a couple other high school guys. And we were so cocky. We played our first gig literally after we've been playing our instruments for like three weeks. <laughs> and I called Ambitious. up like an actual night- <laughs> man, I called up an actual nightclub that like had like an actual venue. And we had enough of our friends that were like, holy crap, you guys actually have a gig. It was like one of these teen nightclub things yeah, yeah, that yeah. we had a bunch of people there and we sat there and just kind of like we bullshitted and bow jangled as we say in the South mm-hmm. uh, for, for like an hour, you know, and we actually got paid. But I was like, this is really, really cool. Wow. I, I just yeah. loved, I just loved the, the feeling and then getting into pop and then getting into Metallica and hearing, you know, Cliff Burton you know, play that bass solo, take one, and I was just yeah. like, shit. And I was like hanging out with these weird stoner kids that had like a, a grandma that like everyone, she was like sitting in there drooling and everybody else is like partying in her house. It was kind of messed up at the end of the day, but they all like, like, <laughs> like mega them. She was, she was a trip and she would be cooking chili for everybody and stuff like that. And like, you guys eat a lot of chili. It's like, I wonder why. Hmm. But, uh, <laughs> but they were just, they played the best records, you know, like, like Slayer. That's why I heard Slayer and Megadeth and all that stuff. And I got into that, but then coming from Philly and growing up on soul, I had that influence on good songwriting. And then I had my cousins, uh stephanie and ricky in columbus and they they were always into the hip stuff and they turned me on to like hendrix and stuff like that so i was cool. getting all the best stuff and then i got into you know i pretty much can feel anything that's real there's some country stuff i'm not truly a like i'm not going to go out and purchase it per se mm-hmm. but i can appreciate what goes into it and i can see that there is something it just doesn't ring out to me. Some stuff does, like Patsy Cline. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
that I'm the exact like, same way with 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 country music as well. I love like the old school, like more singer songwriter, like with the melody. But real the, country, <laughs> yeah, but not this, the, not the trucks and uh, yeah, the the Metallica shirts. Yeah, I'm not really thousand dollar jeans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Roger Clark. <laughs> not a I fan. got a thousand dollar jeans on the track. <laughs> exactly. Those are the songs. That I'm not. I can't. Yeah. The artists are cool. Maybe. But I don't know them personally, but I'm just I can appreciate them. But I yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like electronica too. electronic stuff. Like I was always a fan of like a damn what's that? Aphex Twin. I always loved them. They oh, were yeah. just so far out. That's like mm-hmm. some old school stuff, but I haven't heard anything that really weird in a long time. Yeah, you know, a trip. Yeah, yeah. It's like he's it's it's one it's one guy. You know, it's 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 one guy, and it's crazy. Uh, like even in his videos, if you want to check it out, there's one called Window Liquor, mm-hmm. and he superimposes his uh, face on all the dancing girls in the video. Oh, uh, okay. And he has an interesting face, so it makes <laughs> it really funny. But it's huh. like. But the the art that goes into making that interesting music translate slash correlated directly into the video stuff for it. Mm-hmm. Like it was kind of like unsettling. Mm-hmm. And I think art should do that. It shouldn't, art should do whatever it should be. It should cradle you when needed. It should slap the shit out of you if necessary <laughs> and take everything in between, mm-hmm. you know, because that's what life is. You know, it's like every day is not going to be you know, a weekend song for me, probably no days. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm thinking about calling myself the following week. I think that'd be kind of <laughs> that's dope. awesome. The following week, <laughs> yeah, or, or next, and week. I could just like that would be too soon. <laughs> <laughs> that's too soon. <laughs> Way too soon. He's charting down stuff and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you so tell me what happened in your music journey after this first show. Like, did you, you guys got mm. paid? You said you brought like a a handful or a lot of people there to this club. Did well, did you well, guys after perform that, I, and do anything? Like, I mean, you said you that, only had the instruments for three weeks. That was kind of it for a while for me. I kind of went into the woodshed per se and just really started getting into my instrument and mm-hmm. really learning it, uh, woodshedding a bunch. Try- and I was trying to play stuff like the most complex prog rock you can figure out. So it took me a long time to get dialed in, mm-hmm. but I was learning Rush. So I was able after a while to play really super complex bass lines mm-hmm. and sing. So when it finally clicked, it kind of got to a point and just kind of built from there. And then um, uh, formed a band called the Peasants of the Apocalypse. Okay. And we did some stuff, Open, we opened up uh, like the amphi- amphitheater in North Carolina for Metallica. Whoa. Metal yeah. That's huge. It was like, the, well, it was like, you know how they set up like the side stages, but they're still right there, Yeah. you know? And to you be still on get the, the bill, crowd. though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and it was completely a, it was a very interesting show, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. But, I to mean, wow. To, to say that you got to open up for Metallica, that's massive. Mm-hmm. And at some that's point, so I remember, funny. like, a couple of those dudes kind of off, I think Kirk Hammett made me was off kind of, because we were by, yeah. like, the... Um, like the VIP tent was that's kind of where it was set up so they could just stick their heads out. And kind of but yeah, it. it was it was really cool. That's awesome. And then from there, from there we did really we did very well. And then, you know, it's a typical story of every band, you know, someone, you know, it's just like with life, people start out meaningfully to be going like this together, but most end up going apart. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody just had their own, to say it eloquently, we all just had our different paths, you know, mm-hmm. like one guy ended up taking up like he's like a, you know, Tai Chi master and the other guys like, you wow. know, in jail for murder. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. different ends of the spectrum Can't there, huh? <laughs> 
You cannot make this shit up, brother. You can't oh make it up. Oh my goodness. You yeah. cannot make it up. But it's wow. but it was really far out. And then I just started gigging with some more established kind of psychedelic pop bands in North Carolina and then doing some stuff up in New York. And then finally uh had a good friend of mine that moved to San Francisco. And previously I've been out a few times just to, you know, hang out and, you know, do the San Francisco thing. Mm-hmm. And Rice and Roni. You know, <laughs> <his jobs. laughs> got some rice aroni. <laughs> rice aroni. You got to get like the bowl, the sourdough bowl. Oh, so you, you have to the bodine, the chowder, bodine bowl. Chowder bowl. <laughs> yeah, the chowder. chowder. Bowl. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, this really linked up with some really awesome, awesome people. I have a real, real dear friend of mine, Pamela Parker, who is you should look her up. She's phenomenal. Okay. She's probably one of the purest singers that I've heard that's around. She just hasn't gotten that notoriety yet, mm-hmm. but she's someone that like, when she opens her mouth, it it, it, it hits you here in your soul. Mm-hmm. She's one of those. And through Pam, I met, you know, Chris McGrew, who's one of my best friends, who's a drummer on the project and got a, you know, and he, uh, it's like one person introduced you to another cool person, to another person. And then we started doing a lot of work out of Hyde Street. And then I met Jameson, the producer. And Jameson is actually Sammy Hagar and Joe Satriani's guy. Wow. He did a, check this out. This is a trip. He did the last record he did. Beauty, number one on the Billboard charts in May. Are look you, it up. You, May 2019. You cut it out there. So that, what, what, what record was it? Sorry, that charted. It was Sammy, whatever band, Sammy Hagar and the Circle. Oh, oh, th- that's the, the guy that produced a record is the guy that worked on your guy's yeah, record. it's the same oh, producer. Okay, that's awesome. So we, we have the same, and he also produces Satriani and all this stuff. And he's wow. also like one of my best buds now too, just, but just a great guy. And so it's like the dream team. Mm-hmm. And then I have my buddy Johnny Extel, and he played the band back in the day called Psycho Funkopus. And he's just a freakishly talented player just Mm -hmm. so good he's one of these people that no matter how much you practice and play you watch him play and you're like shit (laughs) or something like Like, maybe it'll warm me up yeah i gotta just give this up (laughs) warm me up (laughs) (laughs) oh man (laughs) but um but it was just like just super friends and, and so much love in the room and then recording at Hyde Street, which was, you know, that's where Jerry, that's where the dead recorded records and, mm-hmm. and Crosby, Stills and Nash and Digital Underground and Train and the Dead Kennedys. Yeah, just and there's this the legends there. of San Francisco. Yeah, definitely. I know, you know, and then I actually, you know, started working on a couple little sessions singing here or there pam hooked me up got me on a couple things and you know for the past you know not the past few months of course since the chaos of the world struck us (laughs) but you know it was everything was great everything was rolling and we cut the we cut most of the record and uh chris mcgrew and i had we had plans to go to paris we hooked wow. up with some folks in Nam and set some really cool stuff up. And we're going to go over there and do some promotional stuff and play some shows and, you know, just yeah. see Paris in the springtime and not so much, Man. you know, but better safe than sorry. And I believe that things happen when they're supposed to and not a I second agree. before. Yeah. I yeah, I definitely agree with that. Well, you so you were working on the record and it was the record complete prior to the covid lockdown or how did kind of how did i had this thing called called i keep writing too many damn songs itis <laughs> <laughs> that's probably not a bad thing to have and i was like it's, <laughs> it's fun well yeah when you're the person that's putting the record out like i'm you know the, the label might think differently but <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 they're amazing it's a, it's an amazing label that i work with there it's phenomenal phenomenal how'd you, get, how'd you get hooked up with them if you don't mind me asking um, a friend of a uh, friend of mine 
introduced me to this cat years and years ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, through the social media, you stay in touch with people. It's like, hey, what have you been up to? And he used to come out to, to peasant shows and when I played with a couple other bands. And he would always come check it out. And, you know, real super, super cool guy. And we just stayed in touch. Uh, and the Halloween before last, I was in Nashville playing a show with the All Time Low Stars. That's a wow. band that uh, that I occasionally sit in with. It's a uh, Kenny Olson. That's I think he played with like Kid Rock and Whoa. all the yeah. He was well, he was that guy. And he doesn't have the same beliefs as a great American. <laughs> 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 And uh, and uh, Peter Keys, who plays uh, with Leonard Skinner. Oh yeah, I know the name yeah. Peter Keys. Yeah, yeah, and it's like an all-star band. We got to, like the last time we played that last show, like uh, Bubba Sparks sat in. Wow. You know the rap. Yeah. So yeah. It's, so the next day, I was sitting in with Kenny at this place in Nashville called Alley Cats, and uh, the cat came down and. You know, we had a couple of drinks and I got up on stage and Randy. So we, you know, went and grabbed some sushi afterwards and worked out a really cool deal. And uh, it just so happened that uh, some time came open at Hyde Street. It was literally in Christmas or something around that time. Mm-hmm. And started knocking it out then. And a lot of it came, you know, finished the bulk of it then. And then the deal was I was supposed to fly home, visit my folks and stuff and family in uh, North Carolina mm-hmm. and then fly back out. But before all that could happen, everything shut down. All that. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. So I started, you know, so I kind of went through this weird writer block thing where I couldn't do anything for the first few weeks except watch CNN and freak the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my brother-in-law is. He's, he's a musician in Los Angeles and he said the same thing. He's like, ah, like after a few you know, after so long of staring at the same wall, like how do you stay inspired? <laughs> yeah. So, so literally I just had to just dig outside of it because it was, I was just having fear for the future, thinking about my family, mm-hmm. people, you know, what other people are going through and just all that stuff. And it didn't come out exactly like kumbaya, but it got <laughs> what I was feeling across, you know? Yeah. And, and I wrote some pretty, you know, and I wrote, it was a perfect way to finish it up. So originally it was supposed to be eight songs okay. and then it ended up being 13 songs. Wow. 12 songs. 12 songs. 12 so songs. you're full, full record then, like a full yeah. LP putting out. It was supposed to be an EP, but... <laughs> But COVID made it an LP. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, so is Neverlutionaries is your first like, re- like this is like a new project, right? With you for you the, in this. Yeah. Yeah. The, it, it's as far as like release and everything. Mm-hmm. It's it's a new project. I've always had different little monikers and. Sure. Didn't really feel. Sometimes you have to feel right about a project before you really put your all into it and push it, mm-hmm. you know, and the, the energy surrounding this, like the stars were so perfectly aligned with the way everything kind of worked out, you mm-hmm. know, from, you know, being able to, you know, you know, e- even when we were recording in Hyde Street, the last time that Johnny had been in that studio was the earthquake that hit San Francisco. Wow. And so that was which one? Heavy- the one during the World Series? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Wow. So that was the last time he was there. So that was that emotion. I couldn't, and yeah, then, that would be a trip. Wow. How scary. Yeah. I mean, that would I would even be worth like nervous, like it was gonna happen again or something. Mm-hmm. Get the wobbles. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Well, but, it's crazy. All those buildings are on sliders because I know, right? Yeah, because if they aren't, it'll just go. <laughs> Like it's crazy. And yeah. engineering genius. Yeah, <laughs> for, for sure. It's yeah. just like how they give like the tall skyscapers in New York, make them flexible so they have room to give. So they just don't yeah, they create don't. that point of tension and just, you know. Snap. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think King Kong's gonna jump up on it and be hanging out on it, you know. 
I don't think anytime soon. <laughs> but who there. knows? I, I, nothing would shock me anymore. Maybe going to the zoo. You know, <laughs> that always bothered me. But when I was like, a, you know, I would have gone to the zoo. Not like a building. It's, it's not <laughs> relative, but I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, well okay so you got you have two songs out now right for, for the yes. project uh is it ariana and yes Pick ariana away. is the first uh-huh and Stumble. taken away is the second one um actually one kind of came out accidentally and oh, i didn't see that <laughs> one <laughs> yeah, the, the official one is uh stumble Okay. Which I, I, I can where can I find and, that one? Can you tell me tell us um, where to find that one? Because I'm I went on your SoundCloud and Spotify and I, I just couldn't find uh hold on one second. I will actually get that over to you within a couple minutes. Hold on. Oh yeah, second. no worries. I'll yeah, I'll take a I'll take a listen after the, the interview. That's cool. Um yeah, because yeah. I just saw the two that you have out. Um but uh that was like a little that's what you call an artist made boo boo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well with um why did you decide on you said 13 songs on the record why did you decide on ariana's well, the first actually, actually 12 12 12 sorry. it wasn't gonna be 13 but i'm kind of suspicious okay so i didn't want to be 13. no i'm not doing that and yeah. oh know, like, that's oh because the third i got it <laughs> i like yeah. do the windmill my arm flies across the room off and i'm like oh <laughs> it's because of that 13th song <laughs> i knew it was that damn 13th song i knew it i knew it <laughs> every time you play it live like you break a string or something exactly something happens like the, like the stage will collapse or something like that it's just like bad luck <laughs> oh that's funny well why did why uh, ariana's the first first song off the record that you put out we there's actually a song that has uh that Kenny Olsen's playing on. It's called Everybody's Sitting Around Losing Their Minds. <laughs> and the last verse is everybody's sitting around losing their minds, thinking about the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really think it was appropriate timing. Mm -hmm. And I think right now to make someone think about something they're already thinking about, give take them, you know, we sometimes as artists have the responsibility to entertain and part of that entertainment is escapism sure you know to have a song and ariana is a very trippy floaty song and it kind of like mm -hmm. and that's and it's all lovey and warm right rather than singing about everybody's losing their minds it's kind of obvious yeah. you know i should just name that song obvious now you know and just, <laughs> isn't you know, it obvious you know. that's the name of the song isn't it obvious damn it <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, I just wanted to kind of ease people in because part of my sound as i mentioned earlier i have so many i have such a very you know very palette of influences that there's so much that encompasses who i am as a musician who i, I am as an artist mm -hmm. there's always going to be that soulful part there's mm -hmm. always going to be a hair of angst and there's always going to be a little melancholy in there you know it's mm -hmm. sometimes you write from your experience you know mm -hmm. and i guess when i start hanging out with bunnies and shit and like <laughs> the hippies fairy and dust and stuff, <laughs> they start farting out their butts and stuff that i'll start writing some bubblegum bubblegum stuff but you know i kind of you know it's more like introspection kind of looking over life and making your you know this a lot of this is an honest analysis of things i've seen mm -hmm. things i've been in but they're all something that's real and i think that when you record stuff where you're coming from a real and true place you're going to get a really it's like anything if you start out with like you're someone's making some whiskey if you start out with pure ingredients you end up with a better product you're cooking food you know if you're going to cook a, a steak and you cook you know a butt steak that's like a dollar a pound compared to like Wagyu beef or something like that. Right. Like Wagyu beef, it's a little bit, it's, it's different. So there's that element to it for sure. Wow. Well, with, uh, you you said three songs out now, what's the, when's the record coming out in full? The record comes out on February 12th on Polychromatic Records. Okay. And uh, it'll be available on all streaming platforms wherever you get your music and you know i'm, I'm really i'm really excited about it I've, I've written a lot of music in my life mm -hmm. 
And this is something I'm really, really super proud of because at some point, each of the songs gave me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how the cosmos tells you. This is it. You got a good one here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, Compared what's to like the title light? of the record? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, self-titled. Just self-titled. Oh, just self-titled. Right on. Cool, cool. Uh, what about, um, I mean, obviously, hope, hopefully stuff will be open sooner than later. Is the plan to tour the record? and? Oh, man. I'm putting together things for the live show now that I'm going to rehearse it and make it as tight and beautiful and moving as I can because people really need to, especially come out and all coming out of all this. Mm -hmm. It's my duty as a musician to entertain, you know, that's what mm -hmm. the cosmos gave me. That's what, you know, God blessed me with. Sure. So now's the time to put my money where my mouth is. <laughs> yeah. You what know? about, yeah, yeah, totally. And with that, like, do you, are you planning like like what about live stream stuff like it, are you interested in that? I'm, is it kind of like I'm playing, maybe i'm planning to get resettled um in new digs in san francisco within the next probably like month or so month and a half okay so once i get back and things just because every time i'm about to go out and do my thing lockdown Sure. Go out like, well, are we in another one now? <laughs> it's like, yeah. You know, so it's like you can't. <laughs> it's, yeah. And so once I'm able to, you know, get out there and reconnect and, you know, get, I got a couple spots in the band. I still have to confirm, but we have some really cool players that are going to be with us. That's amazing. That, that, people, that people would have known and heard of for sure. That is super so cool. I'm, I'm really, really excited just to just to bring these songs. And I listen to, the, you know, when you're recording, you listen to the song so many times and listening to these songs in succession, it kind of birthed a whole other idea for these other 12 songs that will probably come out, you Very know, but cool. they're they're just coming out and just to make it. I just wanted to be interesting. I want to be one of these artists that when people listen to this stuff, they know they're going to get something that has some musical and artistic integrity that comes from a pure place. And that's entertaining and good, you know, because I, I don't want, you know, I don't want to write crap. You know, <laughs> sure. no one wants to do that. I never want to get caught in that thing where, you know, we've been subjected because of the way that the music machine is, you know, worked. We've mm. been subjected to crap, you know, that's, disguised as a diamond you know mm -hmm. but you can't shine up anything that damn much you can't polish a turd <laughs> <You know? laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> that's yeah, one of my favorite that's one of my favorite things <laughs> and it's, it's true yeah. it's true yep yeah it's true. so funny you know oh. so yeah so but, but to get back to it i'm looking forward to you know getting back out there putting together something that's really special mm -hmm. and then touring the world when it's able, you know, when, when it's, when it's possible mm -hmm. and just cre creating music and, you know, writing stuff that, and entertain people and give people, you know, something to feel like this is, you know, and even I learned so much having that dark period where I, it was like, I was musically frozen, mm -hmm. spiritually mm -hmm. frozen. And I was scared. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and, okay. And I'm preaching, I mean, everyone is going through their stuff. Everyone has their challenges they've been going through. And then I have challenges, you know, then there's other things going on. So my whole thing is just to learn from this and become a better person, mm -hmm. become more patient, make it more about what else someone else is going through rather than myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you have so much time on your hands to sit inside of your freaking head, you like you can think yourself in a hole and out the hole, in the hole, out the hole. Mm -hmm. But now I've thought myself completely out the hole and I'm about 20 feet away from it. So I'm good to go. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to accidentally trip and fall on it. <laughs> <Thank goodness. laughs> yeah, plenty of 
plenty of space between you and that hole. <laughs> I love that. Well, oh, thank yeah. you so much, Christopher, for for hanging with me. Thank today you so much for chatting having with me. me. I do have one more question. I want you, uh, to see if I can get. Five. Um, I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yes, I do. All Write right. your truth. I love that. Write what you feel. Write not upon what you expect someone else to like. Write upon what moves you and what you feel in your heart. Because at the end of the day, there's artists out there that have written songs that they don't like that fit them, that they're stuck playing something they don't like for the rest of their lives. And then it goes and becomes a number one hit. And then it's like <laughs> for a couple lifetimes, they got to do it. So <laughs> stick to your truth. You know, you don't have to be the best. You don't have to be some kind of like Hendrixian, Joe Satriani kind of super guitar wizard person. Everyone has their own lane. Like they have their lane. Everyone has your lane. It's like find your lane and be honest about it. Is that your lane? Is that really where you want to be? And stick with it. 